Good evening, everyone. My name is Jiu Huang. But to most people, I am known as Hu. <laughs> which is actually my mother's maiden name. <laughs> and the answer to my credit card security question. But joking aside, I just want to reassure everybody that uh, I am invited here tonight. <laughs> I grew up in China. Who didn't? <laughs> and my childhood memories are totally ruined by my childhood. When I was in elementary school, as part of the curriculum, I had to work at a rice paddy right next to a quarry where they used explosives to break rocks. And that is where I learned that our light travels faster than sound. <laughs> Which is almost as slow as a flying rock. My dad was a grumpy guy, but uh, occasionally he would try to cheer me up with jokes. But he doesn't do it right. When I was seven, one day he said to me, Hey son, why is tofu better than centralized socialist economy? <laughs> so five minutes later I said, Why? He said, Because I said so. I came to the United States in, when I was 24 uh, to study at Rice University in Texas. That wasn't a joke. <laughs> Until now. Um, and uh, I was driving this used car with a lot of bumper stickers that are impossible to peel off. And one of them said, if you don't speak English, Go home. <laughs> and uh, I didn't notice it for two years. <laughs> and like many other immigrants, uh, we want our son to become the president of this country. And uh, we're trying to make him bilingual, you know, Chinese at home and uh, English in the public which is really tough to do, because uh, many times I have to say to him in public, hey listen, if you don't speak English, go home. <laughs> and uh, he would say to me, hey dad, why do I have to learn two languages? I said, son, once you become the president of the United States, you're going to have to sign legislative bills in English and talk to debt collectors in Chinese. <laughs> when I graduated from Rice, I decided to stay in the United States. Because in China, I can't do the thing I do best here, being ethnic. <laughs> And in order for me to become a U.S. citizen, I had to take these uh, American history lessons where they ask us questions like, Who's Benjamin Franklin? We're like, oh. The reason our convenience store gets robbed? <laughs> What's the second amendment? We're like, oh, <laughs> the reason our convenience store gets robbed? <laughs> what is the role versus the weight? We're like, oh, 
two ways of coming to the United States. <laughs> Later on, I read so much about American history that uh, I started to harbor white guilt. <laughs> and in America, they say that uh, all men are created equal. But after birth, it kind of depends on the parents' income, birth, education, and health care. I read in the Mad Health magazine that President Obama every week has uh, two cardio days and four weightlifting days. You see, I don't have to exercise because I have health insurance. <laughs> I live in Massachusetts now where we have universal health care. Then we elect this Scott Brown. <laughs> Talk about mixed messages. I think there was a movie about him. It's called Kill Bill. <laughs> I'm honored to uh, meet uh, Vice President Joe Biden here tonight. Um, I actually read your autobiography. And today I see you. I think the book is much better. <laughs> They should have got cast Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, you know, <laughs> or even Angelina Jolie. <laughs> so, uh, I, to be honest, I was really honored to be here tonight, and uh, I prepared for months uh, for tonight's show, and uh, I showed the White House my jokes about President Obama, and that is when he decided not to come. <laughs> and uh, he started to talk about immigration reforms. <laughs> Take that, Stephen Colbert. <laughs> and uh, President Obama has always been accused of being too soft. But uh, he was conducting two wars, and they still gave him the Nobel Peace Prize. And he accepted it. <laughs> you can't be more badass than that. Well, actually, I'm thinking that the only way you can be more badass than that is if you take the Nobel Peace Prize money and give it to the military. <laughs> we have many distinguished journalists here tonight, which, whom I consider as my peers. Because I used to write for campus newspaper. <laughs> I think journalism is the last refuge for puns. <laughs> Only on the newspaper can you say things like, I was born in the year of the horse. And that is why I'm an essayer. <laughs> My point exactly. And uh, tonight is my first time on C-SPAN, which is a channel I obviously always watch. When I couldn't stand the uh, sensationalism and demagoguery of PBS and QVC. <laughs> if I still couldn't fall asleep after watching C-SPAN, There's the C-SPAN 2 and C-SPAN 3. <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, I became a U.S. citizen in 2008, uh, which I'm really happy about. Well, thank you very much. Uh, America's number one. That's true. Because uh, we won the World Series every year. <laughs> After becoming a U.S. citizen, and uh, I immediately 
registered to vote for、uh, Obama and Biden. You're welcome. <laughs> You had me. Yes, we can. <laughs> That was their slogan. <laughs> so、uh, after getting Obama Biden elected, I felt this power trip, <laughs> and、uh, I started to think maybe I should run for for president myself. <laughs> well, I have to take a step back and、uh, explain a little bit, you know, because.、Uh, I had always been a、uh, morose and pessimistic guy. I felt that、uh, life is kind of like peeing into the snow in a dark winter night. <laughs> you probably made a difference, but it's really hard to tell. <laughs> but now we、we'll、have a president who's half black, half white. It just gives me a lot of hope because I'm half not black, half not white. <laughs> Two negatives make it positive. <laughs> And you may be saying, "Hey,、uh, what would be your campaign slogan?" You see, I spent ten years in the past decade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you too? Okay. So I understand that American people are suffering. So my campaign slogan will be, "Who cares?" <laughs> If elected, I will make same-sex marriage not only legal but required. That will get me the youth vote. <laughs> you see, I'm married now, but、uh, I used to be really scared about marriage. I was like, "Wow, 50 percent of all marriages end up lasting forever." <laughs> And I will eliminate un unemployment in this country. By reducing the productivity of the American workforce, <laughs> so two people will have to do the work one, <laughs> just like the president and the vice president, <laughs> or the Olsen twins. <laughs> and despite heart disease and cancer, most Americans die of natural causes. So if elected. I will find a cure for natural causes. <laughs> you seem to like that one, <laughs> but you won't be covered by health insurance, though, <laughs> because of、uh, pre-existing conditions. <laughs> And I have a quick solution for global warming. I will switch from Fahrenheit to Celsius. <laughs> It was 100 degrees, not 40. <laughs> you're very welcome. You're very welcome. <laughs> And、uh, I am pleased with、uh, foreign policy because I am from China, and、uh, I can see Russia from my backyard. <laughs> I believe that、uh, unilateralism is too expensive, and、uh, open dialogue is too slow. So, if elected, I will go with text messaging. <laughs> I will text our allies just to say hi, <laughs> and text our enemies when they're driving. <laughs> OMG! You're building a nuclear weapon. <laughs> But you're doing it wrong. LOL.
I just want to thank Radio TV correspondent Stephen Turner for having me here tonight. And uh, this is the first time I wish my son knew what I was doing. Thank you so much and have a very good night. Thank you, Linda Scott.